particular area I work in, where we are just now, is a place called Uig on the west coast of the Isle of Lewis. The community is split into two, um, Uig itself having about 300 uh, patients and there's a separate area called Burner and there's about another 300 patients there. There's a very elderly population so the demands are significantly increased with the problems that age brings and the limitations of transport and access. Dr David Rigby serves one of the most sparsely populated areas of the United Kingdom. He drives up to three hours every day to run surgeries and to visit patients who can't attend them. It's such a rewarding place to work. We, because of the remoteness and because of the lack of access to hospital facilities, as a GP we get to use a, a, a very wide range of skills which you watch, often wouldn't be able to do if you worked in a more urban setting. But doctors like David Rigby are hard to find. In spite of programmes and initiatives designed to attract medical professionals to work in the remote and rural communities of Northern Scotland, very few take up the jobs on offer. Once we can get people up here, um, then they tend to stick. They enjoy it, we give them a high quality experience. Um, but getting people to think about coming up here is a challenge. When we survey, as we do, um, people through our programmes, um, they give us a good account of the experience that they're having. So yeah, we, um, we know we have a quality product, we just need to get the right people into it. This shortage of frontline healthcare providers is common to many rural parts of Northern Europe. It leads to longer journey times for appointments, a rapid turnover of staff, distortions to the provision of specialized services, and more difficulty in accessing healthcare. And my daughter needed glasses, and we had to travel for 12 hour, hours to see um, an eye specialist and that was just to see him in 20 minutes and when we lived in Oslo we had a 20 minutes uh, you know uh, trip with uh, the subway. The GPs do not they do not stay there which means that a patient will meet a new doctor every second month or every second week and um, uh, the continuity doesn't work, which means that they have to tell the story over and over again. And if they um, make lab tests, um, no one do a follow-up. The service of midwifery, midwives, has changed. All deliveries are more or less in urban areas or in Akureyri hospital, you know, either in, capital, in the capital or in Akureyri. And uh, deliveries aren't done anymore in the smaller places. So the service has changed into being prenatal and postnatal services. Life expectancy in Greenland is 10 years below the other countries here. So, uh, so there's, uh, you find very poor areas, you find very remote areas, and you have the, uh, you have a uh, uh, lot of alcoholism, a lot of suicides there. These problems have prompted communities from Greenland, Iceland, Sweden, Norway and Scotland to come together to try to find ways of attracting and keeping more health staff in remote and rural areas. These delegates arriving at a conference in Stornoway on the Isle of Lewis will spend the next two and a half years gathering evidence and then using the data to come up with a plan. The project's called Recruit and Retain and is supported by the Northern Periphery Programme which is funded by the European Regional Development Fund. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. There are areas of difficulty in getting people to come and work. In, in the kind of environment, the remote and rural environment, which is found in the periphery of Northern Europe, where the population is very sparse, where the workload is not as high as you might expect it to be, 
where maintenance of skills is difficult and the whole social life and the social environment is different to where they've come from which could be the urban environment. There have been many efforts in the past to try and resolve this issue but this is a concerted effort with multiple partners working together to try and resolve it in different uh, parts of Northern Europe. By December 2013, those involved in the Recruit and Retain project will have mapped a way forward. They'll set down guidelines for buddying and mentoring schemes for health staff moving to remote areas. For reducing professional isolation through sabbaticals, secondments, the use of ICT and the internet. They'll create networks of urban-rural partnerships to underpin remote healthcare services by establishing links with universities and training bodies. And they'll suggest support packages to overcome the domestic and social barriers to rural recruitment, focusing on housing, schooling, employment for partners and spouses, and social networking. All of these to be presented at the end as a business case to be used by partner countries. The conference and associated workshops in Stornoway began the process. Guest speakers were invited to contribute their experiences in dealing with the problem. At an international level, delegates heard how the World Health Organization was implementing solutions across the globe. At a national level, they learned of the various initiatives being undertaken across northern Scotland to improve recruitment of staff and ways of providing continuing education and training across sparsely populated communities. And speakers from the Western Isles gave an insight into how the difficulties posed challenges for healthcare provision. A significant concern for medical workers in remote areas, whether they're employed in a busy island hospital or elsewhere, is how to maintain expertise, develop knowledge, enhance skills. The perception that this is difficult to do in a rural environment is regarded as one of the major barriers to recruiting new staff. What we want to get out of this programme, um, and we've heard a lot of it already just from introductory uh, discussions with colleagues, the element of being networked into part of a bigger organisation where you can actually provide uh, more local services by being part of a, a, a wider team and that way, the specialist who has to satisfy the challenges of revalidation, reaccreditation, uh, and appraisal, and keeping up to date, can be addressed as well as securing the local level of provision. If you come to work in an area like this, whether it's the Outer Hebrides or any other part of the region, that, that doesn't mean that you've forfeited your right to ongoing education and advancement and the skills you need for either doing your, your job better or being promoted within your work environment in the way you might expect to in a, an urban environment. Computer links and video conferencing do help. They already deliver some services and allow important contact between fellow professionals to exchange ideas and expertise to ensure that modern techniques for patient care are developed and delivered in these areas. But Recruit and Retain will look beyond the working environment of the individual and examine the wider difficulties thrown up by moving to remote and rural communities. You get isolated. You're probably used to another way of living coming from a big city or the university. And now you have to um, start a new life, actually. It's going to be a key part of the Recruit and Retain project that we do look wider than just the professional into the, the kind of wider social and opportunities for whether it's families or work for partners or you know a sense of having a, a quality of life. I think it will need to look at employment opportunities, it will need to look at uh, educational provision, it will need to look at leisure and recreation facilities, it will need to look at things like uh, connectivity in terms of broadband and, and the like. Um, it's, re it's really cutting across every element of your societal infrastructure. The Recruit and Retain project will also examine whether new approaches to medical education and training might encourage rural health workers to stay in their own communities. 
Evidence from Iceland, for example, suggests that moving training away from the main urban universities to rural locations has stemmed the drift of staff to the country's towns and cities. We have universities outside the urban areas and it has definitely shown us that, for example, educating nurses in other places than uh, urban universities, it has really come up, uh, up now with the status of having no lack of nurses. Because the, when you educate them, at least that's our experience, if you educate them in other places, in places where they come from, they are more likely to work in these areas afterwards. In Canada, they've taken that idea a step further. The Northern Ontario School of Medicine has been built in the heart of one of its great wildernesses, a bold response to the health needs of a remote, diverse community whose culture includes French-speaking and Aboriginal peoples. Its admissions policy favours applicants from those backgrounds and students from remote areas, and its distinctive courses emphasise the need to engage with rural communities. The Dean told the conference in Stornoway that as a result of its radical approach, almost all, 96% of its medical graduates, choose to remain and work in rural environments. The model that we have in Northern Ontario is, is certainly about learning in context, but it's also about active community participation. So what we're finding already is that our communities have been empowered by the involvement with the school, and the, it's actually enhancing the capacity in the communities uh, to, to, do, to take their own initiatives to improve uh, the health services, uh, to be more actively involved in, in the education and the delivery of health care. But these are just pointers for the partners involved in Recruit and Retain, and the project has only just begun its work. First, they have to gather and analyse important evidence, evidence that will not only inform their own findings and conclusions, but serve to enhance the search for solutions worldwide. What the Northern Periphery Program can nicely do is, is provide evidence from Northern Europe which can add to our level of understanding on these global challenges we're all facing. So some of the solutions, I suspect, will be very precise, reflecting the situation in Northern Europe but I would anticipate that Northern Europe will also be able to add value to the overall global programme. As we know, the migration of people are all going from the remote and rural areas to urban areas. I don't think that's what we want. We want to have people living in, in these areas as well, at least to some extent. So if we can offer them at least a kind of healthcare services which makes them secure, at least the, 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 the basic service, I think we can be pleased about that then. What we'd like to see is the work that we've done being used to actively recruit people and find ways of bringing people in so that they recognise that this job is a job that's worthwhile doing. Now that doesn't matter whether it's a doctor, a nurse, allied health professional, or any of the other people that are necessary to make the healthcare system work. We've got to bring them in, we've got to make sure they're the right people, the high enough standard, and once we've got them, we've got to be able to keep them. Well, that doesn't mean that we want to say to people, you've got to spend the rest of your working life here, but it does mean that we want them to be working for a period of time which they can contribute and they can make a, a good sort of way forwards for the kind of healthcare they're providing. Mm -hmm.